This episode of the Rooster Teeth Game Hour is brought to you by Gamefly. Gamefly is the largest online video game rental service, offering you a choice from over 8,000 titles across all consoles and handhelds. Gamefly members can rent one to four games at a time and keep them for as long as they like. For our listeners, Gamefly is offering a free 15-day two-disc trial. Just go to Gamefly.com rooster to sign up today. Welcome to the inaugural episode of our pilot gaming episode. podcast. It's a pilot It's going to be totally episode. different. We're going to have characters that aren't going to be here in the final version. <laughs> plot lines that are totally off the wall. Well, a lot of us will be dumber over a period of time. And that's the way it always works. Characters get dumber over time. Yeah. <laughs> I so, feel like um, I just saw you guys here last night. We're here to talk exclusively about gaming. Gaming this podcast. This is our, our gaming podcast. Well, one of the complaints and we always got about the podcast is that we didn't talk enough about gaming. And so, as weird as it sounds, we thought it'd be best to have a dedicated gaming podcast. When we first started talking about it, I go, well, here's a weird idea. Yeah. What yes. if we had a gaming podcast? So, we, we do a gaming podcast, get into like the real big details of real big details. It's sort of a... You also did this when you said real big. Yeah. yeah. Real, real big, big details. Real big, like his dick. You know. Oh, look, we've already gotten off topic. No dick jokes. <laughs> wrong podcast. All right, well, why, tell us why so, we did chose today. To do it. So we chose today because we knew that Xbox was going to have their press conference unveiling the uh, Xbox One. And so, you know. Well, we didn't know what it was going to be called. Right. I'm just. The reveal of the next generation <laughs> good input, of the Xbox. Jack. So we thought the timing was good because it would give us a lot to talk about, especially since the uh, PS4 was previously unveiled back in February. So we talk about what we can expect from the next generation of consoles to be announced at E3. I'm excited. They included the thing which is now going to... I was originally going to buy the PS4 just because I, I didn't really do PS3 or anything. I was like, I'll get the PS4. No, I'm not going to. Blu-ray. Yeah, you, that, it's true. The Blu-ray. I can't imagine I didn't how... Was that they were, shocking, though? I didn't think they would yes. put it in. Really? Because I believe... Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Somebody can look this up. I think that to include a Blu-ray drive, you have to pay Sony. Yeah, yeah. I it's their it was technology. Phillips. That's absolutely true. But no, Phillips owns the DVD standard, I believe. There, oh, there, there was, there were, there's consortiums of companies that own these standards. There was a consortium that backed Blu-ray and a consortium that backed HD DVD. So it works as they make the technology and then just license it to, uh, to other companies. Is yeah. that how it works? You to, yeah, you pay a licensing fee. Hmm. Even like for DVD video, I believe. That's uh, why Microsoft was pushing HD DVD, because that wasn't a Sony product. Who in VHS? Uh, JVC. Yeah, I think you're right. Really? Yeah, JVC owned VHS. Was Betamax Sony? Yeah. VHC was owned by JVC as well, and Betamax was Sony. Yeah, because it, it was VHSC. VHSC, right. Yeah. But um, no, th- really, that's shocking to you. I mean, uh, like for ga- I mean, games but, are getting bigger and bigger. I'd imagine they need some sort of medium. Yeah, that it, would be, it could be I mean, a proprietary format as well. Like, you think about so. like the Dreamcast had the GD ROMs, or. You know, no, no, that cartridge seems impractical. Uh, I think it's point. interesting enough to note that the, the next-gen Xbox, the Xbox One, has a drive. Yeah. That was not a given either. It might have just not had a drive whatsoever. Yeah. Have they said anything yeah. about the PS4 having a drive? Uh, yeah, I, yeah. PS4, PS4 has a Blu-ray they drive. Meant, no, I think he means hard drive. I think no, no, they, I meant a disc drive, oh. an optical drive. Yeah, yeah they yeah, said yeah, Blu-ray. PS4 has Blu-ray. Okay. Well, it's like a slot loader this time. Yeah. Yeah, in fact, a lot of people... Well, let's talk a little bit about the form factor, too, because in the Xbox reveal that they just did, they showed the actual console... They showed, immediately they showed the console. Yeah, you could tell they were they were trying to make up for you know ground. Now Nintendo had a release next week. They would show a bunch of games because yeah, now yeah. everyone's complaining about games for the Xbox reveal. Uh, they showed the controller, a modified version of the controller, which I thought was interesting. That's potentially fixing something we'll that, that wasn't broken. Um, and a lot of people were talking about the size of this thing, how big and boxy it looks. Yeah, it's, it, I, I really couldn't get a grasp of scale looking at it. Well, well they put I, the I controller said, next to it. Yeah, well, if you if you Brandon and Chris, if you guys had the photo that I said. <laughs> Somebody who works for Polygon tweeted a photo of his hmm. pen uh, next to the Xbox One, and you can see exactly, like, like for reference, how big to, it is. To me, based on what I saw on the stream, it looked as wide as your laptop there. Yeah. Um, I mean, hopefully we'll, we'll get a, a look at the reference, but it seemed like, and it looks more like it's designed to fit and integrate into a home entertainment system. Yeah. Like, you could have it next to your receiver or cable box, which you might not need anymore. Right. Uh, and it would just fit right in. Except, style. except for the fact that, obviously, they're pushing heavily connect. Because mm-hmm. when they were interfacing with, like, the guy Yousef came up and he was showing all the media technology, he, he controlled the entire thing with connect the entire time. Right. And so it's, it's, that unit does have to be separate and outside your entertainment and side. They showed, yeah, and they showed that bar. But it made me think of, like, a speaker bar, which people seem to use a lot and is popular with people who don't have surround systems. Or a Wii bar, whatever you want to call yeah, it. It's thing. definitely bulkier than a Wii bar. Like no, a, definitely. Yeah, a Wii definitely. bar you could easily put on top of a thin TV because it was so small. This looked like it had 
again, I don't know what the scale of it was. It looked like it was uh, pretty substantial. I have a third-party Wii sensor that is they wireless. Do? Oh, it's wireless, and it uh, runs off of double A's. That's huh. much more convenient. It's really cool too. And as soon as it stopped being used, you can set the timer on top of it, and it's like one hour, two hours, it shuts itself off. And so mm. I, I've had the thing like five months, and quite frankly, as little as I use my Wii U, uh, and uh, you know the the features that it has built oh. in, I haven't changed the battery in. So there's there's Just the, the Xbox One. Next to a pen. This picture came from at Sam Red, who works at Polygon. I saw it on his Twitter feed. Somebody retweeted it. I got so that's say, a pilot pen. It's double the width of that. I it's also f- not very tall. I am yeah. fine with it. Yeah. yeah it, it looks, it looks would, much slimmer there than it did. I would much rather than cram eyeballing. good technology into a bigger enclosure than to try and make it small. It's not like we're going to have it in our pockets. That it's already looks be, tiny. Are you yeah. saying that, that looks, looks big to you? That looks tiny to me. It looks tiny to you. Oh, yeah. yeah it's double the size of a pen? Yeah, that, that looks... Yeah, oh, you got the pen. Kara, Kara, oops, that was terrible. Kara brought in the, the, so, the type of pen. Yeah, just for reference, so this is here. I'm holding up now the pen that they have in that picture. This is the same pen. But isn't that longer than... So it would be like double that. So that doesn't seem like that big to me. So is it as wide as your laptop? <laughs> well, work. I'm going to... Right. So it's about that big. So it's about double the size of that pen in width. Nice. I mean, essentially, if you look... If we can go back to the picture, Brandon, I'm sorry we asked you to take it down, but uh, go back to the picture. It's actually, you can look, it's about double the size of a disc. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's a, this drive right Because there's a the slot drive right there. As you can see, it's about two DVDs laid side to side. A little bit bigger. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Interesting. That uh, doesn't seem that so big to me at all. I'm, I'm assuming it, the, it could probably also go vertical, too. One of the things I was curious about... That's a good question. ...that they kind of hinted at, but they didn't really elaborate on, is it seems like you can plug... It, it seems like it would act like a receiver, almost, where it would route all of your different entertainment. Like, they, you, yeah. On the specs, they noted it was HDMI in and out. Yes. In is... Interesting. Yeah, there was like HDMI the PS3 in. prototypes, if you remember, back when it, before it launched, I believe it had four HDMI yeah. uh, ports, three of which were inputs. So and that got scrapped from the final version of the PS3. So they want you to plug your cable box through HDMI into your Xbox and then that into the TV. Is that how they want you to do or it? Or do they want to... Do right, they, or eliminate the cable yeah, box. Yeah, I think... Yeah, so I wanna, just I wanna, the internet I want to see the, the back of that thing. I want to see or the plugs on the back. coaxial cable. I didn't see a coax on the back of it. Oh, did, have we seen the back of it? Yeah. Oh, okay. They showed it in the video. Did they? Yeah. They, when, they, when they expanded all the parts out, it flipped around and they showed the back. Oh, I didn't, I didn't see that. I didn't, I didn't see, see that. a... I might have just missed it. There was I, a weird like plug on the top of it, too. Like yeah. a weird, it looked like it looked almost like, like a... Yeah, it looked like a power cable on the top. But that's weird. That, that yeah, wouldn't that be a would, good placement for it. No, it no, might no, be no. where the connect plug The power was on the, on the left side on the back, the figure eight. Yeah, like, on, I know what Jack's talking about. Like looking at If you were looking at that photo with the drive, it was like on the left side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like some weird little notched plug hole. Yeah, there that's the back picture. There's the split of it, if you're watching. So those stats say 1080p uh, HD camera. That's that's the connect. That's yeah, not that's actually the. the oh, that is the connect breakout. Yeah. Yeah. Microphone arrays, time of light technology. No time of flight technology. Time, time of flight. Is that what you were saying? Time of flight. <laughs> yeah. Actually earlier. Yeah. So that's the new technology they have instead of like infrared for determine how far away people are. And actually, what were you saying about that? That like, what's the big differentiation now? And like, what is with people though? How close can you get to the connect now? Um, the guy in the demonstration was about three feet away to see all the connections. So, so three, three feet away. Three feet away. <laughs> super wide. View. So I mean, I think that's a that's a, a complaint a lot of people had was that the connect requires a lot of space. They didn't have a so uh, split bedroom, the size of a football be. field. Right, and I think a lot of I think that hurt people speculate that hurt sales in Japan where people have smaller living spaces. Hey, a lot of people have smaller living spaces that use Xboxes. I yeah, mean, dorm, dorm rooms. Room. Yeah. yeah. Stuff like that. So the fact that it's Blu-ray now, does that mean it won't play a DVD? Does that mean it won't play well, old play, games? Play DVDs. Yeah. Do they? Yeah. Your, but, okay, so that's, that's another sticking point that came out after, afterwards, is now they're reporting that the Xbox One, uh, I've seen reports on this on Polygon, I've seen reports on Kotaku, that they're saying the Xbox One will not be backwards compatible to 360 games. Oh, wow. Not even, from what I'm reading, not even downloadable games. So there's just so, no emulator in there for that? No. Okay. I'm looking at the PS4, PS4 said that it will have... It'll stream PS1, PS2, and PS3 games. Yeah, they've got a new sort of service where you like can... Like through PlayStation Cloud. Yeah, it's like, it's like almost like, a, what was that, OnLive? Like, like similar to OnLive. Right. So there's a, somewhere a bank of old hardware that you're streaming to your new Basically, hardware. Basically, yeah. Interesting. That's what they're doing with the PS4. But so th- no backwards compatibility. That's, gonna, that's I th- surprising. I know you've never been a fan necessarily of backwards compatibility. I just don't think it's like Gavin said, he doesn't want to sacrifice performance for a tighter form factor of the gotcha. unit itself. I don't care about backwards compatibility... It's like for anything else. Like if if it if like they can't upgrade the GPU because they have to use one that can work with backwards compatibility. Let's just get a better GPU and just move ahead. Also, yeah. I'm not gonna when I buy this, I'm not gonna throw my other one away. 
If I want to play an old game, I'll just keep it. I, I'm one of those people, I'm more likely to just download something for like, the games for like Xbox Originals on Xbox 360. Those are the original Xbox. Now we can't call it the Xbox One, but the original Xbox games, like I like games like Sega Soccer Slam. Um, oh, that was a good game. Yeah, Beyond Good and Evil. <laughs> um, you know, you can get games like that on the 360, and they tend to be a lot cheaper than they were at retail. They're not full 50 bucks like they were for the, when the Xbox days. Like for 15 bucks. For the new generation, I'll carry those other games over for 15 bucks, and I realize that like some people play games differently than me. They go back to their library on a regular basis. I just I don't do that, so I don't care much about it. Mm -hmm. No, I mean I I run such a deficit on games anyway. Like I'm right now playing Far Cry, Cry 3. I just finished playing Skyrim, you know. So I run a deficit already unless it's a game that's relevant, you know, to what I'm doing. Like a big landmark game, like for me, like Red Dead or Halo 4. Uh, those I'll play at launch. So EA said, I, th I want to say that they would have, oh no, I'm sorry, that was EA, it was Microsoft said that they would have 15 exclusive 15 games exclusives, in the eight first brand year, new series. Yeah, eight of which were new IP. What do you think about that? I'm, I want to see how many are Connect games, like if, if we can take that away. Okay, that's fair. I mean, like knock that out. I, I'm cool with new, you know, new exclusive content. I mean, like, we need talking, it. Talking Gears of War, Halo, stuff like that, but... I mean, I would love to see some new IP. Like, the, even that, what, Qu uh, Quantum, what was the name of the Quantum game? Quantum Break. Quantum Break. Like, that looked kind of cool. I have no idea what's going on there, but, like, the idea of using a live action mix of the video game stuff, it's kind of a cool so idea. So you took away from that that the game is going to have live action in it. Yeah. They talked about it, I think, when they were setting it up, that it was like a, a hybrid type of uh, experience. Like a movie game. Right. I think he was talking more from a narrative standpoint. That okay. what you do in the interactive parts affect the narrative as it goes. That it's not just a narrative cut between interactive stuff. Like Alan Wake... And uh, what was the other title he's talking about? Max Payne. Yeah. Max Payne. But uh, I think they were just talking about how that studio likes to have a narrative that's affected by what you do in gameplay. So, yeah. I mean, that, that's an interesting point, especially because it seems like that was a, a theme they touched on a couple of times, was how important it was to drive the narrative and to have a compelling narrative in order to draw the players in. I feel like a lot of times game companies will focus on hardware specs and number of polygons, talking about that creating an immersive experience. But here they talked about weaving the narrative with Remedy for the Quantum Break game. And they also brought in the guy who was, he was the, the writer for Traffic and Syriana because he was writing Call of Duty Ghosts, talking about how you have to have a compelling narrative in order to draw people in and have them emotionally connect with characters. Yeah, I, I'm glad they recognize that fact. It's not all about just like, oh, we have, you know, like, we can push so many polygons. Like, no one gives a shit about that. I mean, like, you know, it's, it's well, all... Yeah, you give a shit. Well, you, you, want, you want it to look good. Yeah, but, but you want it to look good. But at the same time, like, I connect more with, you know, old school, like, you know, like... Like Call of Duty Two was probably some of the like the best story. Like the, I got more into that game than a lot of the later Call of Duty. But do you are. not think ninety percent of gamers skip every cutscene they see? I would hope not. No, I don't think so. Really? I uh, really don't. I would say there there is a large there is a large group of people that would skip just like narratives and cutscene stuff. But you know, if you if you deal with those gamers, but you also have to deal with other gamers. I, I mean, there's gonna be. I mean, they like people are saying there wasn't a lot of gameplay, which I understood. But they showed two games that you know. 90% of the world know about. They showed off Madden, and they showed off Call of Duty. And FIFA, don't forget. And FIFA. FIFA. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and FIFA. Yeah. And so it's like, those are the games that, you know, you're sort of, someone who goes out has two games a year, they're going to buy the new Call of Duty, they're going to buy the new, new Madden. And like yeah. that, that's those like, are slam dunks. And, yeah, and, and so... They, like, also, right. they also mentioned they were going to have uh, exclusive FIFA con content for FIFA that was exclusive to the Xbox yeah. One, the ultimate team mode. Yeah. Okay, let's be perfectly honest. If you're showing a new console, you... You know, you're who knows how long out from la launch. They say they're going to launch them this year all around the world. But yeah. that's interesting, too, that they're going to mm -hmm. put it in different markets at the same time. But <clears throat> if you're, say, seven months out from launch at this point, um, maybe six, if they're going to do it in November, you're showing games that early in development, you know, and it's also launch titles. Let's be honest, launch titles typically don't look all that great. Yeah. You know? um, so I wrote down... Some titles on the Xbox look better that were coming out when the 360 launched. Yeah. yeah. I, I will say, though, it was kind of surprising we didn't see any hands-on gameplay there on stage. We Why not... does that matter so much? It, it's something about, like, knowing that it exists and seeing the world. Like, I mean, like, all, like we watched the Forza cutscene, we watched the Call of Duty cutscenes. And it was like, they're like, oh, it's gameplay, but it's like, we don't know, you know, I want to see, like, show me someone controlling. Like, it was yeah, they, they, they brought up the actors, there. though, with the controllers playing the game, everyone would go like, oh, these fucking losers, no, they're not gamers, yak, 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 you know, yeah. you hear that too. Well, but so it was a hardware announcement. What's that? It was a hardware announcement. Right. But I'd rather focus on what the platform is yeah. going to be. Okay, you know? okay, but I mean, and also, I mean, uh, honestly, like, we are close enough to E3, and we're going to see all that stuff at E3, I'm willing to bet. Yeah. You know, we'll see people on stage playing the games at E3 during the I Microsoft do think that. I think they set the stage. 
for software to take the spotlight at E3. Yeah, which so is great. For comparison, I, have, I wrote down here that uh, during the PS4 announcement, they showed nine different games. Okay. Uh, they showed Knack, Killzone, Shadowfall, Drive Club, Infamous Second Son, The Witness, and then everything. F those were all exclusives. And then from here on out, it was um, multi-platforms. Watch Dogs, Diablo 3, Destiny, and Quantic Dream. I'm sorry. Then uh, Quantic Dream showed off a demo. Quantum Break. No, Quantic Dream. The, the people who made um, Heavy Rain. Oh, I they see. They showed off a tech demo. I just wrote that down. But they didn't, okay. they didn't yeah. show a game. Well, okay. like, if I look at that whole reveal, like they showed, like, Call of Duty, let's, let's take Call of Duty, EA Sports, FIFA, Madden, all that, and just set that aside because those are like pillars. Yeah. You know you're going to get those if you play those games. But like the one game they showed was Quantum Break. If you take that, it's like, I can't, honestly, I couldn't make heads or tails of what I saw. I saw a ship crash into a bridge. I saw a little girl move into a new town or whatever the hell that was in live action. And it, my opinion of that up or down doesn't matter to me at all in comparison to everything else. Like, they did show one game, so it's like, you think I would focus on that really yeah. as being like, oh, that was really important. It doesn't seem all that important to me. Yeah. Like, that being the one game. Yeah, I mean, so, yeah. like, they, they definitely set it up as like almost like a two-part reveal. Like, even the end of the video, like, even at the end of the, the presentation today, they had a slate that said, you know, we are See you in 19, days. Yeah, 19 days away from E3. So it's kind of like this is here's this stuff and then here's the rest of it. So Absolutely. It, so I think they set it up pretty well. I mean, they definitely learned from the PlayStation 4 announcement where, I mean, literally the first thing they did was like, there's the console. And it sat so there for the whole there's, damn time. There was no reason at all for them to show the hardware today and not just wait another two weeks to show it at E3. Right. There's no reason. They could have dominated E3 by showing the Xbox, revealing it Xbox One at E3, and everyone would have talked about that. So there being no reason, there must be a reason for yeah, it. I was going to say, why do you think they even had this event? Yeah. It seems like... Well, I mean, if they're 19 days away from their E3 presentation, why have this ancillary event 19 days ahead of it? Which makes me think that the E3 presentation is going to be heavily weighted towards software. And totally software right. and service. And yeah. if, it, yeah. if it wasn't, it's now going to be. Yeah. Like, they're going to give games more of the spotlight now at E3 because they're getting all the feedback. Mm -hmm. And I know they must react to feedback because what was the first thing they did in this thing? They showed the hardware. Yeah. Exactly. They showed the box, which was what everyone said about the PS4. That they didn't show the console. Well, they released that teaser yesterday that showed like some weird close-up blurry shots of yeah. it. Yeah, which it looked like like so the PlayStation 4 teaser they showed with all the close-ups and stuff like that. It looks like the same room they showed the Xbox console in. Did you see that? No. There's, there's like a trailer showing off the Xbox One. Oh, and it's yeah, like yeah, it yeah, looks yeah. like the same room. Like like they just took it out and put it in the PlayStation. There was a guy just waiting, like waiting for them to clear off the PlayStation. <laughs> yeah. like, all right, like, this, is the, this is the console yeah. debut room. <laughs> yeah, exactly. How should people send us uh, questions? So they can tweet using hashtag RTGH, and we're monitoring it right over here like, on Rooster, our monitor. Rooster Teeth. What's his Rooster Teeth Game Hour. Game Hour. <laughs> oh, there we go. See. So get get it. Hour. Got one it. One hour. You're the only one in the world that, that thinks that's a selling point. <laughs> it's a selling point. Uh, so, uh, and if people are watching it on our website, uh, the, the Twitter chat dialogue that's there should automatically oh, you should get up there and send in uh, tweets using that hashtag. I don't know right. why so many Actually, just found out about a new, new title that's revealed for, uh, confirmed for Xbox One. You want to tell us what it is, Ash? You want to get up there and tell us what it is, real quick? So, um, so did PS4, did they, say, did they say a bunch of titles? Did they have a bunch of... They uh, had a bunch of people there. Gaming they, they, titles? Yeah, but also the PS4 announcement was like two and a half hours long. So it did they show really gameplay at the PS4 one? Because that would imply they're showing hardware then. Yeah, they no. showed gameplay. Oh, well, they showed gameplay, but not hardware. But now people, did they show people playing it? Yes. Yeah, they showed people holding the controller. They unveiled the controller and they showed the DualShock 4 controller. They okay. did not show the PS4 itself though. And look, I should freely Hello. admit, I mean, we've yeah. said this before, that we tend to lean heavily towards Xbox. I there really lean heavily towards Xbox. We, I, and, now that, absolutely, and now that we talked about the DualShock 4 controller, I want to talk also about this Xbox controller that we saw with Xbox One. But I think, uh, we yeah, might what's be, the title you said you just saw? We what's, might be ready. What's that? What's your title that you saw that was Thief, first? everybody? For, Thief. Uh, um, Thief, the um, the one that Idos is doing. Where'd you see that? Um, on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Who is it? What's the source on that, Kathleen? Um, I'm looking it up right now, but it's on Polygon. It's just hit IGN. It's on Eurogamer. So um, you can, is that you know, it's pretty easy because they already confirmed it was coming next gen. So now we just know it's coming to Xbox One in addition to PS3. Oh, I okay. mean PS4. Okay. Actually, Ashley actually used to work for Xbox and then she worked for IGN as well. But uh, I, when you talk about the gameplay stuff of them showing the gameplay, I don't know that they did this, okay? I do not know for a fact. But I'm also assuming that every single one of those presentations was canned, including when the guy's talking to the Kinect. Oh, and he's yeah, saying, well, oh, yeah. They're not going to risk, like, the, the connect going, the and fuck it, are you saying? You yeah. know? It worked perfectly as well. There's no way. There was even a point where the crowd was cheering, and he said, or connect go home, or Xbox go home, or whatever. Yeah. And it went right back, and yeah, the, I, the crowd I, is cheering. I figure, I'm sure the technology works great, but I'm sure in a live presentation mode, 
They, they, you don't leave anything to chance. I bet even g scripted gameplay stuff like at E3, I'm sure, <laughs> like, I feel like those are pre-recorded and someone's just standing there holding Th That's my point. It's like, even if you see gameplay and you see somebody with a controller in their hand, a lot of that stuff is you, well, But you have seen, I mean, we've seen it before where like a controller dies or yeah. something like that. I have like, also heard stories from people who've done, given those presentations, talking about how nervous they were because it had to go right and they knew there were these things they had to avoid. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well we know that because, I mean, we do exhibitions with people at RTX and it's like, you can't just take a presentation and move it from one stadium to another. You right. know what I mean? It's just like, it's harder than that. Because mm -hmm. they're tailored for those arenas. Yeah, I figure now, I mean, like, like Thief, we'll probably see the games that have been announced for the PS4 that are all, like, they're next-gen games. So we'll see Destiny is now confirmed for the, yeah. the Xbox One and things like that. So we're going to see a lot of that coming out probably in the next couple of days. I'm going to be really stupid here, Ash. Is Thief, a, uh, is Thief a console game already, or is this the first time it's going to console? Um, It was on, I don't know if it was ever it was originally an announced it was, for it was consoles. On it, was a P, it was an old-school PC game. It was um, the game that sort of defined the stealth genre. Oh, really? The yeah. original the, Thief. It was so the original it's, Xbox, it's one of those... Yeah. Sort yeah. of hallowed game. I think there was a port. I think Jackson. I think there was a port on the original Xbox, which we can no longer call Xbox One. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's funny. Like I think Thief. Like the, <laughs> the big thing Xbox. about Thief was there was no map. There was no HUD. It was just like you had to know the city and get through it. Right? Or at least that was a mode you yeah. could play. In, so. Yeah. Well, here, let me read this here. All right. I want to remind everyone that this episode of the Rich Teeth Game Hour is brought to you by GameFly. GameFly offers over eight thousand video games. Sends you the discs in mail. You can send it back whenever you're done playing. Uh, it's got no late fees, no hassles, with access to all new releases. Works for uh, PS3, Wii, Wii U, Xbox 360, and now for the PC. So for our listeners, you can get a free 15-day two-disc trial. Uh, if you click on the Gamefly banner on our site or go to Gamefly.com slash rooster, uh, it's a super great value. If you churn through a lot of games, that's a way to save a lot of money. So don't forget, free 15-day two-disc trial for our listeners. Just go to Gamefly.com slash rooster. <laughs> <laughs> so a uh, big thanks to Gamefly for support All right, let's talk, the podcast. Let's talk about the controller. So is it me or did the controller remind you of the old S controller for the original Xbox? It reminded me of something I don't know what. There was one the one thing I took oh. away from that was the note that <laughs> that's a, that's Gus is holding up original. This is what S it reminded me of, the original Xbox S controller. The original kind of original Xbox controller was the Duke, the enormous one, and that was the one that originally they <laughs> introduced for the Japanese market, right? Yeah, and then the they S, brought it over. The S is what they launched with uh, in the Japanese market. And then Do you know that was US. probably the single most exhaustive article I wrote for Drunk Gamers was when they released the S controller? I did side-by-side -side comparisons of the Duke and the S, even down to, like, cord length and stuff like that. Oh, Why? Because we were a gaming uh. site. And it's like we were <laughs> writing by gaming. It, um, looked, it looked kind of like a Mad Cat's third-party controller to me at first because it's so flat Oh, there it is. Looking. Got the picture there. Yeah. Um, so, oh, really? That's it, huh? So the, first of all, the D-pad looks much improved. Dude, yes. that looks like... You know what that looks like to me? That looks like the Wii uh, retro controller. Oh, the one they make for it. Yeah, like the ga the quote-unquote gaming controller. Um, it's interesting how the top bit looks like an addition. Yeah. yeah, it's not. It, it doesn't. Well, I, I wonder like they, if they kind of filled in that gap. Well, they said. Oh God, I made a note of it. They said that I think the connect will be able to distinguish. Yeah, players and controllers. So there's got to be some kind of. So that's why it's gloss on the top. Right. So like so the PS4 it. controller had uh, colors on it. I don't know if yeah. you remember when they unveiled the DualShock 4, and I guess that was so we could act like a uh, move as well as uh, identifying different players. So I assume that there's some uh, hardware in there that identifies the player to the connect. Hey Brandon, I'm gonna send you a photo. I'll send it to Chris of the. Uh, the Wii Classic controller is what it's called. Oh, yeah, I'm glad they didn't alter the form factor too much, at least where you grip it. Because, I mean, I think the 360 controller is damn near perfect. Yeah, I they mean, won. They won the controller. Yeah, well. yeah, like the feel, the sort of width, everything is just great yeah. on it. I'm, 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 the, the, the last convert to that was Jeff. Jeff always said that the DualShock was the perfect controller. And uh -huh. I have to play like Jeff. This is how Jeff plays video games like this. <laughs> uh, but he thought that was perfect, the way the buttons were set up. But even he now is like... He yeah. was the last holdout of anyone yeah. I knew. I'm, that. I'm glad to see that uh, the DualShock 4 is changing the format a bit for the PS4 controller. I felt like the old ones were always a little too small, like my hands were like too big for them yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah. This one looks like it's a little uh, a more um, substantial. Yeah. It was interesting what they were saying about some sort of feedback to the triggers. Yeah, on the it trigger feedback. So are they, are they basically saying that they can vibrate a trigger? Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Or are they saying that they can put pressure on it or like adjust the responsiveness? I think like, say you pick up a big gun, will it be like a big squeeze? It might be all the above, so. right? Yeah. Yeah, that would make more sense if a sniper rifle had like a catch yeah. to it, and then you if they could actually like put in some resistance on the trigger, that would like modify the spring. That'd be cool. Or the tension on the spring. Sure, why, why not? I mean, they have force feedback steering wheels with, you know, they have the ability to make hmm. stuff stiff. 
think about how much of the controller is Makes two motors stiff. to make the rumble. I mean, it's like if they can find like a like imagine if you had like a like a the trigger is like on a rubber wheel and another rubber wheel just goes on it, you know, mm -hmm. to like make it slower or harder to pull. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool, man. That, that would, would be, be really cool. cool. And I've never thought about that before until just now. <laughs> now I want that. Yeah, you thing. came up with a you came up with a fucking great idea. Yeah, it'd be good for racing games too. Just like pressure on the. I will, I will say that now the battery is built into the controller. I don't know how I feel about that. Is that it? was the thing that I took away from that bullet list as well. That yeah. was the main thing I noticed. It, they said it like a selling point. Yeah, they're like, oh, the battery is now like uh, integrated, like something special integrated into it or whatever. I don't know if I like that. I, I like the idea of like being able to have extra batteries and just throw one on and keep Batteries going. integrated in your phone right there. Yeah, yeah. but my, They're also know. integrated into my PS3 controllers. Yeah. And my PS3 controllers, um, every time I go to use it, I'm like, fuck, i got to charge this thing. Yeah, i got to yeah. plug it in and use it. So. Yeah. I'm the same it, way. I ne I, and listen, the first time I ever bought an Xbox 360 controller, and I bought a lot of them, I would chuck out that AA battery thing, but I always had a couple of them hanging around just in case I like ran low on battery and I needed to do something. You know, I try to get a, you know, at the last minute, just throw two batteries in. I knew I could do it. Yeah. 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 If they, if they make it easy to charge it, like, that's one thing. Maybe, yeah, and I, I mean, if you can Holy use... shit, what if that's what the top of the, the Xbox is? Is a uh, inductive charging? Yeah, con uh, conductive is that inductive. What's inductive charging. That would be, That'd be cool. pretty cool. You People just charge your Xbox by setting the controller on top of it. Suck if you stack them though. People stack their stuff in their entertainment centers. No, it's true. And just put that one on top. <laughs> my Xbox isn't even in the same room as my TV. It's around the corner, uh -huh. and I have like an IR repeater. I've so. got a house so big, my Xbox. No, is but that's what, I'm <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I'm saying that like it's a cool feature for a lot of people, but if you can't use I it. I but. like I like being able to just charge over USB because there's right. nothing else. So so here's the three controllers. That's the that's the Wii cla or the Wii classic controller. Upper left is the Wii classic controller. The one no. that says Wii. And then we got the Xbox. Uh, they might not be able to see it on the screen. The Xbox Jackass. One controller on the upper right, and then the uh, PS4 controller. Black is the new black. <laughs> I like I actually like the black and white on the console. Like how the white lights up on the black. Yeah. Um. What's the uh, somebody, did you see the fake PS4 that somebody put out? Oh, yeah. yeah. It looked like a prop yeah. from uh, Tron, which was pretty appropriate considering that the original PS3 looked like a prop from Spider Man. Yeah, even the, f the font on it. Yeah, that original um, font. See, now that's a good example. Um, the original, like, domed PS3, mm -hmm. that thing was enormous because it had a hardware chip in it. No, there's the, the fake mock up PS4. No, that's not the no, one I saw. Yeah, that's not the one I saw. Yeah. Is that. Anybody the, know where that came from? Brandon, tell us where that came from. We yeah. need a second. The, there's, there's one that they, they just, like, because they just released this new PS4 teaser, which, like, shows the, the console all blurry, and then they show, like, little sort of, like, individual snapshots of the different areas, and someone took that and pieced it together on what they think it might look like. No, oh, I see. It was, like, it was, like, slanted down, had a little circle on the side. It was, I don't know. I still have that original launch PS3. Yeah. It, it, was, uh, it was an unwieldy, since I couldn't stack anything on top of it. Uh, in my entertainment center. You know, that's where form factor comes into play for me. It's like, I don't care, like, I don't care that this thing is almost perfectly square or whatever it is. I, that doesn't bug me at all. Yeah. So, with the, with the guy using the Kinect to go all the way back and then he would just give instructions to flip from one thing to the other without any input, does that mean you have to have the Kinect to use it? See, I don't know. See, when I first saw it, I, when I first saw them revealing the Kinect, it looked so similar in design to the console. I thought they had integrated the Kinect into the console, and I thought, well, fuck, am I going to have to get my console out now to where yeah. it's mm -hmm. in the middle of my living room? Um, so, I, the answer to the question is, I don't know. Maybe that could also be what's on top of the Xbox is a microphone, so that if you don't want to connect your Kinect, you can just still have the Kinect features of the, the voice activation. It yeah. seems like the fact that they're shipping it with it means you need it. Yeah. I, I think you I will know. need it. I hope not. I will say one thing that's new, as far as I think it's new, is you can turn on your Xbox now by talking to it. Yeah. You can't do that with Kinect right no. now, right? No. So that's kind of cool. You know, it would be great. It would be great if, uh, if uh, clearly Microsoft is all in with this uh, this Connect. I mean, mm -hmm. the last couple of E3s and now this one, so heavy on Connect. Uh, what, how you, however you feel about it, they're all in. Hopefully, with, with this. it will no longer pause and start rewinding my movies for some mysterious reason when I'm watching them. <laughs> Does it do that? Yeah. Do you have that problem? I, got that problem. I, I literally, I literally, most of my Xboxes that I've bought in the last like two or three years, I. The Kinect is still in the box, and you know I used it like once a couple different times, and got embarrassed at how winded I got using it. <laughs> it, would, it would be nice if they had the also in like an option where it's like you know I'm using this Xbox at a desk, you know, or something like that. Right. Like we, we have our all our Xboxes. Remember, like, we, but we, I know our, our, we are very unique. But yeah. I mean, I, I wish they kind of gave you the option where it was like sort of like preset, like okay, is this going to be in a living room? Is this going to be in a dorm room? I mean, that's well, like what I was going to say is they're so far in, they're so committed yeah, to the Kinect. Yeah. 
it would be great if they signed partnerships with TV companies where they integrate the connect into TVs. Oh, that's the next step. The microphone and cameras in the TV. Oh, that's yeah. absolutely the next yeah, step. Yeah, then I, I don't I need... Sa I, Samsung, I think, already makes smart TVs that have, like, Skype built in that have cameras and mics on them. Like, why not unify the platform? They have TVs now. Have you seen the ones where they have motion controls for the TV? Mm -hmm. Like, Kinect style, but where you can play Angry Birds on your TV yeah. with that kind of stuff. Yeah. I, saw, I just saw that display in Best Buy. Um, <laughs> I saw a bunch of angry kids going like this. Like, trying to do it, and it just wasn't working. How right. big is your home TV? Uh, the, my current one's not that big. I had to, like, uh, you know, for Game of Thrones night, I have to, the projector, the, in my old house, the projector I had in my media room, I literally don't have a wall that's big enough <laughs> in my new house to, like, fit that projector screen, so we have to do it outside. So was that your actual, you had watched TV on that projector? I did in my old house. Yeah. Yeah. But that was the one when you came over, you saw it, and you said, oh, well, you must be great at Halo because your screen's so big. Like, that had anything to do with it at all. <laughs> now, you have an enormous, like, wall-sized TV set. Are you yeah. any better at Halo as a result? Awful. Yeah. yeah. Doesn't help at all, does it? And it's really bad for games like Guitar Hero when, back when they had The Wire, when you couldn't get far enough from the thing, so you'd be trying to play guitar like looking at it. Ultimate like, first world problem yeah. right yeah. there. His TV too. He, that was one of the things when he first moved to the U.S., he bought just a... Re he had a mattress on the floor to sleep on, but he had a, the biggest TV I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's all I need. Is well, what any... difference does it make whether I'm here or whether I'm up here? <laughs> nah. I still sleep. I guess so. <laughs> well, when you bring your girl home and there's a mattress on the floor, <laughs> TV. that's not at all a talking point at all? Well, well hello, welcome to my crack den. <laughs> <laughs> I have a bed now. It was Would just... you like to watch some TV? <laughs> <laughs> I have the biggest TV ever. Oh, oh, and also lots of cameras laying around. So, <laughs> so just I'm ignore those. I'm surprised you in particular have not brought up like some of the fantasy sports integration stuff that they showed off with yeah, the like, Xbox One. Uh, yeah, um, I'm, I'm kind of excited about that. Like, I, I, play, I play fantasy football through ESPN, and so I'm curious to see like the NFL stuff they brought up, which they talked way too much about NFL. I know it's a big deal, but it's kind of like, Hey, it's NFL, a big partnership, dude. It's a yeah. big partnership, but like the whole thing with Goodell and, and Matrick, like walking around doing that weird interview thing, it was like, oh, okay, like what are they saying here? Like, oh well, like also one thing too is I hate like, oh this this is a game changer for football or this is a game changer for TV. No, it's not. It really no, it's not. I think it, it's, it's it stands too. I mean, I think I feel like the NFL in the past has been really forward looking with this stuff, with the yeah. establishment of NFL films and the way that they treat highlights and what they do with their broadcasts. They're always pushing technology, like with those fucking yard lines that you see on yeah, TV yeah. that are, you, you can't see at all. And they're, the they're really pushing camera, a lot yeah. of technology, and I think that this is the next step for them. I think yeah. you, can, you, you can really see the potential to have, you know, user-controlled camera angles, user uh, instant replay, things like that. Let me give you a modern-day example. I think something makes a lot better. You're at home, you're watching AMC, you're watching Walking Dead, and... You're just watching the show, and all of a sudden the show goes down to 80% of its size, and they put up that lower thing saying, hey, come on Twitter and, and talk about a, uh, Walking Dead. Hashtag The Walking Dead. And you're like, fuck you. Get that off my screen. Yeah. And you hate it. But if you pop that, and you, you what they call it, snapping? Yeah. Snap yeah, technology? Snap. If you snap that, then it's a great experience. That's a yeah. really cool thing. But when they force that shit on you when you're watching it, I think what, I think what this does is it's showing networks and traditional media companies how to take a non-interactive product and make it interactive. Yeah. And fantasy yeah. football is yeah. I, I, I love you that. can pull up stats and like do like research while you're watching. You yeah. Know, the the a, idea of that of like game? live updating scores and stuff, like seeing how that's going to get integrated in, I'm I'm really excited by that. Like that is very very cool. And I mean the idea of watching NFL on your on your Xbox, that's a big deal. But is it going to be something where you have to subscribe to like get the NFL Sunday ticket, which is you know two hundred dollars a season? The answer is like, yes. Yeah, more, yeah, yeah. More things. It's going to lead to things that cost more money. Yeah, but it's also one yes. of those things. At some point, you know, you're going to be paying for all this other stuff to the point where you can just get rid of TV. But now TV is a big focusing point of the Xbox One. When so you say TV, you mean cable. Cable. Yeah. yeah. So it's kind of like, well, you know, if you have, you should have an Xbox and no TV. That would kind of <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let me tell you what's you happening. Have a TV Sorry. on the floor and a bed on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I mean, I'm curious to see how that works. And um, yeah, I mean, like honestly, I haven't used the ESPN app, but maybe once or twice. Yeah. Um, well, but maybe that's a side effect of a lack of programming, or yeah. or a lack of NFL specifically. Yeah, what I mean, if there was. Like I mean, NFL? honestly, NFL is a huge draw. I right. mean, NFL, college football, um, NBA playoffs, stuff like. I mean, like like some of the bigger ticket things. And like, those are things that they specifically they're, highlighted they're starting in the show. To yeah. So I mean, yeah, I'd love to see it. I mean, if if you get like Red Zone on the Xbox, like that would be awesome. Red Zone's a, a channel which is a, yeah. a football thing, but um, it's a great idea for a channel because it shows 
teams that are about to score. Yeah. yeah or what if, well, oh, here, let's take it a step further. What if with this new NFL Xbox partnership, you could create programming like Red Zone? Like you could script something and say like, anytime a team meets these parameters, I want to pu pull that yeah. display up. No, that, that's, that's really, really cool. I'm, but I'm, I'm very curious to see what the extent of this agreement is with, with the NFL. Mm. I mean, there's so many agreements they have with like various TV networks and things like that. It's kind of like, how in-depth is this going to be? Um, and so, we'll, we'll, I mean, we'll see more about that. I mean, hopefully, do you think this will be this season they'll start it, or do you think it'll be next season? Uh, it'll depends. probably be next season, because I don't imagine that the you, hardware you, will launch you before have to, the, the you new have to, season. Yeah, you have to figure the hardware will launch around Thanksgiving. If I had to take a guess, November 12, 2013, 11, 12, 13, game companies love those dates yeah. that have uh, a device like that, a numerical device. When, when I was in England, I was, I was a pretty serious gamer. I had two Xboxes and two TVs. So my friends could come around and we could do system link and stuff. If you're working with a voice activated thing now that has to be on, like a connect, how do you stop it from controlling two Xboxes at once, do you think? How do you like if you, had two, if you had two connects, or like even... Well, just for, two setups. Like, how do you, say, for example, know? we have the Achievement Hunter office. Well, there, there's five, five computers That's and, a real and extreme, though. But well, a lot of people do have two Xboxes in yeah. the same room. So, like, if, if every time Jack tries to make an example, everyone goes, "Yeah, I don't count." <laughs> <laughs> it's like if you say like Xbox off, and then like everyone's yeah. Xbox turns I mean, off. Am I going to be able to screw with everyone in the office by just walking in and saying Xbox yeah, off? Yeah, people, you'd have to start <laughs> locking the door in the achievement hunter office because you know people would be walking in. Oh yeah. Going, well, hey, what are you talking about? He does that to Michael all the time. Yeah, during Skyrim. I did that with a yeah. I would he, be like fire would, breath, quick save. <laughs> yeah, he would. He would, and he like, would burn the entire <laughs> town, and then it would save his game. <laughs> and he would just go screaming around. Although most of the time, it didn't understand my dumb accent, so it's yeah. okay. Um, yeah. Hey, uh, Chris, I'm Brandon. I'm sending you guys a picture that Wired posted of the controller close up of the buttons, and I, I want to talk about it in a second. Um, but I want to go back to the NFL thing real quick, because okay. when I saw it, um, I was thinking about the repercussions of this thing. So the interactive part, the snap, um, they showed with the NFL game, like, oh, look, the guy scored a touchdown. It updates your fantasy stats. At some point, are we going to have to, like, delay data and conversation streams? Like I might watch the NFL game well after my fantasy scores are updated. So it's like, can you set that to like, all right, I want to start now and have it update as I go. Does that make sense? No. I mean, or like delay the notification of your fantasy. Exactly. Because if I look it's at like, my fantasy list and it sees like Peyton Manning jumped way up, you know, I know he doesn't play anymore. But, uh, well, you know, does. Peyton Manning still playing? Yeah, oh, I thought he retired last year. No, Sorry. No, he, I he, didn't know that, I guess. He, he left the Colts. Okay, but, they, uh, but what I'm saying is, like, if Peyton Manning jumps way up in the stats, then I know he had a great game. And it's like, eh, I mean, can, while I'm watching it. You can get that now. I mean, like, you know, I've got, I've got an app on my phone that keeps track of my, my fantasy team. Yeah, so but even what he's I, saying is, like, what if you're playing a game and you get oh, these notifications? Oh, okay, okay, you're like, yeah. shit, I'm going to watch that game later. Well, okay. that's, that's the other thing, though, too, is that they showed Snap for popping a window with Internet Explorer, but they only showed it with TV. What I'm curious about, and this is relevant to what you guys do with Achievement Hunter, could you pop a browser window when you're playing a game? They never showed Snap working with a game. Yeah. I never saw that specifically. They, so. talked about, they talked about when they were talking about the three different operating systems and how like, the, the, you have the gaming system, you have the dashboard system, and then the one that kind of intermingles them. That did not fill me with confidence. Well, they, they, were, they were showing a game playing with the dash going at the same time. So maybe there's something there. I don't know. Oh, right. Yeah, they had snapped it down a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. So... Um, yeah, the, the, the whole three operating system thing uh, was weird. So one of the other things that got mentioned, you know, we're talking about this NFL-Microsoft partnership. One of the other things was EA said they have a special relationship with Microsoft now. They made it a point to say yeah. that a couple of times. And a yeah, I think it's a special partnership or relationship. I forgot how they phrased it. And that they would have more news coming up. So uh, one of the other things that Brandon and I had been talking about before we started the podcast here, earlier in the day, actually, we had talked about how EA said that they have no active titles in development for the Wii U currently. Huh. So I wonder if uh, those two news items are somehow related. So you think maybe they're just going to drop support for the Wii U? And well, they're not, they're not developing anything for the Wii U right now. I heard a really scary stat that one of the years of Madden, I don't remember what it was, it sold like 67,000 copies on the Wii. Yeah. And that's like, for Madden, that is nothing. I mean, that's yeah. like... If, that, you're, if you're Nintendo, you got to be frightened by stuff like that. I mean, like... And EA, they're probably looking for an excuse not to develop for yeah. Wii, you know? Yeah, that, that would save... And if they can form a partnership that probably gets them a lot of money yeah. as well and a lot of guarantees for marketing and stuff like that, why not, right? If, you know, if they want to prune, essentially, something that's not working for them. Yeah. yeah. Now, uh, one thing um, that I was reading about before I came over here is the whole idea of, like, people have been complaining about, like, are they being curious about always-on and used games and stuff and how that's going to work? 
And from what I gathered, I, I read an article. Someone was talking about that. Was a lot of that in Twitter. You're yeah, right. is now um, you can put an you put a game in, and every game is installed into your hard drive. Then it sounds like it links to your gamer tag. So like, I buy a copy of Halo. I put it in. I install it to the hard drive. It links to my Jack P gamer tag. Then I can take the disc out and play the game. And so it's linked to that account. But then that disc, if I gave it to you to go play it, you could you would then have to pay a fee in order to install it on your system. How would you know that, link though? It to your, well, it's linked to your account. Well, isn't that how Yeah, but how would you know that you've already used the disk? That doesn't make any sense. Okay, well, I mean, it's the same. I guess it's I, maybe it's an activation code or yeah. something. I don't know how it's going to work. isn't that like well, how, how it's linked to tied to your account? Think of it like Steam. I mean, I can't say, yeah. oh, I bought I bought uh, Team Fortress 2. Bad example, it's free to play. But, you know, I bought, uh, whatever, Counter-Strike or Half-Life 3. I bought Half-Life 3. I can't just give it to you to play. Right, because there's no physical aspect to it. But yeah, and I can't say, well, I'll stop playing it. You play my copy of Half-Life 3. You have to get it through Steam. Right, but what we're it. talking about is, like, if it's a physical, and, and that's, that's an exception. Steam is purely digital. What if there's a physical aspect to it, like a disc? They're talking that... All Xbox games may have to have an install requirement. That they all have I to think, be installed. Uh, yeah, they all have to be installed. But Aren't all the PS all, all PS3 games install automatically? No, no, no. I like that. No, uh, okay. but still, like even so, there's no way to indicate on a disc that it's already been installed once. Yeah. So, like, let's say Halo Five comes out and you buy it, and then you're done with it and you give it to me, the system cannot write to a read-only disc and tell it that it's already been yeah. installed. Yeah, but you know, and it's, it's curious too, like. Yeah. Like they they uh, they ask specifically if I put a disc in, can I play it off the disc and not have to pay an additional fee okay. for it? Unless, which is that I mean that would be the whole. I thought of the exception. What's that? They'll do it like a online pass. That's what I'm thinking. It could come with a code, an, activation an activation code. code. Couldn't they have a random code in a disc though, to, that can be used once? That's what yeah we just said. But would that be, could that be on? He's the talking, disc he's talking on the disc, not on like not. Okay. Oh, like printed would, on the disc? Like in the game? Like you you it would link to an Xbox and then that would be used. No, yeah. well, because then, then you'd have to make every single disc a That's what unique I'm burn. But I think you just put a, a, an insert, yeah, like insert a, a paper insert, like, like when you bought Mass Effect 3 and you wanted to play online, you had to yeah. get the little card from inside of it. That so kind twi of deal. Twitter's now saying that we confirmed the release of Half-Life 3. So. <laughs> Are they our, great? Our podcast will get a little bit of press from that. Hopefully. Someone call Gaben. Uh, so I sent Brandon uh, pictures, goes back a little bit, sorry to jump around, but I sent Brandon a picture of the controller. That has a close-up of the buttons. The trigger is significantly smaller in comparison to the bumper buttons now. Mm. Well, the bump is way bigger. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. I mean, I like, really. I, I, I mean, that, I felt like that's one of the key differences between the DualShock and the Xbox controllers was the spacing between the bumper and the trigger. Yeah. And there, that is a USB mini, it looks like, yeah. plug right in the middle there. So I guess that's, I'm assuming that's how, how you're going to power it. it. Also, yeah, shit, I didn't sell. And then if you guys are interested in seeing it, I gave him a close-up of the back of the Xbox. Oh, I want to see well. that. Yeah. Um, you can All see right. So power on the left, HDMI, optical, HDMI in, to HDMI's, and then two, HDMI out. Two USB USBs. Threes. What's that? To, that's probably that's connect. Probably connect. connect. Optical audio network. What's oh, the, wait, what wait. is that next hold, to the network? Hold on, guys. I'll, I'll, I'll pull it up there. for you real quick, and then we can talk about yeah, it. Yeah, so I don't know what's, well, in, what's in next between to the HDMI. I, I got it right here, guys. Hold no, on one second. Okay, let me pull it up. <laughs> no, let's, I'll tell you. let's speculate. Let's scream <laughs> I, like, I like screaming and speculating. What, yeah, what, what is okay, that? Okay, what do you want? Okay, first, going from left to right in the image, that is power. The label is HDMI in. Uh, that's optical out audio. Okay. The next one is HDMI out. I assume those are USB. It looks like yeah. USB yeah, 3. Yeah, those are USB 3. The next odd one is a connect. Okay. Uh, and then the one after that, it says something out and then network. Something, something out. Is that optical out, maybe? So yeah, you, it's, it's optical out. Don't worry, guys. I'll tell oh, you what so it is. The other it's one's something optical out. out. The optical out is between the HDMIs. Maybe no, optical yeah, in. I think so. Probably what that maybe that is optical in and then optical out. If you can route HDMI in, you could probably write route optical Why in. Why are they different well. sizes? I don't, I don't know. know. Maybe it's one of those optical. Oh, I'm going to get up and get, look closer. <laughs> yeah, at Gus is going to go. hand you this if you want to. No, I, I think it's funnier oh, for me. It's, it's IR, IR. infrared. Yeah. Oh. oh, so if you if you if you have a repeater like like Bernie was talking oh. about, probably IR out is what it says. Yeah. I IR think out. someone on Twitter. I think it was uh, Grady was tweeting something about an IR repeater uh, for cable. See, that looks like really tiny. Like looking at the back of that, it looks much smaller now. Just seeing. I think that's that. only part of the console too, bud. Yeah. That's at the whole back of the. And console. there's no. Oh, okay. There's no coax or anything for cable. So. Yeah, there's no coax. So I guess that means t a TV, well, I guess you'll feed it through the HDMI. Also, I'm looking at the controller, bottom oh, of the controller it's, picture here. It's how it changes the channel on your cable receiver, IR out. Okay. That, that's what it does. Oh, that makes so sense. You so I have repeaters to, like that for yeah, my thing. Thank you, Adam. Thing. So you're going to have to have a, a cable that comes out of your Xbox and then covers the infrared on your TV. Uh, or it just like... Or it just blasts it everywhere. Yeah, it just blasts it back. You ever used an IR repeater before? No. It just like little black things like that big and you point them back towards your IR receiver and it just blasts yeah. the okay. signal out at them. That's how I get... That's how I'm, at home, how I just have a little thing in the wall and I point my remote at that. 
and it controls all my stuff. Ashley just sent me this uh, from Harvey Eagle, Xbox UK Marketing. It says, quote, Connect does require to be connected to the Xbox One in all cases. Yes. Wow. He was answering a question. So you have to have the Connect connected to the Xbox hmm. at all times. Yeah, they're, like you said, they're all in on that. That, yeah. is, that yeah. is a full... I can't help but wonder, though, if you unplug it, will it just not function, period? Or hmm. if, what if you just put it in a drawer? <laughs> you know, I ran, I ran into a really weird problem uh, with DRM and downloadable games where, you know the achievement in Halo 4, uh, a midnight launch, where you have yeah. to jump at midnight? That's what that is. You have to play your Xbox at midnight and catch air in your Warthog. You can change the time oh, yeah, of the yeah. console. Um, you can change the time of your console. That's how a lot of people do it, and a lot of guides say you just change your console, unless you're using the games on demand version, like I am, because you have to disconnect from the network, otherwise it updates your time. But when you disconnect from the network, you can't play your... Uh, so um, you, you have you, 10 minutes, though, right? You can't play, <laughs> no, you can't, but you can't start the game. Oh. If it disconnects while you're in it, then oh. you can't... I tried all this. It's like, I changed my time, oh, and disconnect from the network, can't start the game. But you can do... You can set up a dummy NTP server on your local <laughs> network and then like re reroute the DNS on it so that it looks up from your dummy NTP server. Here's what I did. Or you set an alarm. Remind me to play Halo <laughs> at 11.50 p.m. Yeah. That's exactly what I did. So wait, wait, wait. So even if that was the console you downloaded it to originally, you no, can't play offline? No, that would probably work. Okay. I just had no, had no memory which console I Because I didn't realize to. until recently I was messing around with Minecraft at home. And you can't play Minecraft offline unless it's the console you bought it on. Yeah. And I didn't, I didn't realize that We ran into that issue last year, RTX. Um, when we, yeah, we had the Minecraft console set up. We actually had to download them directly to those consoles. Xbox um, has a really cool tool that you should use every now and then because it is windowed how often you can use it for obvious reasons. Transfer, right? Yeah, you just transfer all your licenses to one console. But the window of, it's really long. It's like once a year, I think. Yeah. I think, I think, I think it got down to once six every six months. Yeah. Right? yeah. yeah you okay. used to have to call them to do that, right? Yeah, but then they made an online tool. Yeah, yeah. now that's actually so in the console. An interesting in the, in the dash. peripheral that I thought was going to come out after the Kinect launched, and maybe we'll see it now that you have to have a Kinect plugged into the Xbox One, is I thought for sure, like, Nyko or Mad Cats or someone would make a cover you could put over your Kinect when you don't want it spying yeah. on you. That way your Kinect could be on, but not necessarily listen or see you. Like or a just blasting like you. A with bread, that... Like a bread box, you know, yeah. just like a little thing. It's like, <laughs> boom, you put it on there, and that's it. It doesn't see you. It yeah. doesn't, you know, it has got some kind of soundproofing on it. So... Some people don't want to be heard talking to their stuff. Yeah. Imagine if you have roommates. You don't want people to hear you in your room going, Xbox home, yeah. and stuff like that. So do you, have, but you have to use that now. I would rather much use smart glass know. as I'm a sure replacement. You, I'm sure you can I don't still... think you have to use it. It has to be connected, though. I think you have to have it connected. Why? I don't know. Yeah. So That's what this one guy said, quote, that we just took out of context, but one guy I wish, saying that. Because I, I, I really like smart glass. Yeah. The one thing about smart glass that I don't like is that you can't turn on your Xbox with it, so I don't really mm. use it as much as I probably should. Have you used, uh, like, an iPad while watching Game of Thrones on HBO Go on the Xbox? No, but uh, it's going to give you a bunch of info, right? Yeah, it's like, uh, it updates with, like, history and background about what's going on and maps and uh, ancillary, like, behind-the-scenes videos. Uh, it doesn't do it on the iPhone, I guess, because the screen's too small. Yeah. But if you have a tablet, it's uh, it's a really cool experience. Walking Dead does that too, right? Like they have a connected experience along with it. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't like uh, like maybe on a second watching or a second viewing, yeah. I would I would do that. But yeah, I never. I mean, obviously, I when I watch Game of Thrones, it's when it airs, and then I'll go back and rewatch it using HBO Go on my Xbox, and that's when I'll pull up like an iPad or something to yeah. see additional information. Yeah, I mean, but you, like you said, definitely not on the. Yeah. Phone. Anyone played the watching. Game of Thrones game? No. Joel played it. <laughs> he said it was kind of rough. I think it's one of the things related to like, remember the Lost game where you had to play as like a different character mm -hmm. yeah. who's just not one of the main characters but has nothing to do with the show? Uh, I think Game of Thrones is kind of like that. Like you play like a very minor, minor character and mm. not any of the main dudes. Can you bang Daenerys Targaryen? I don't know. You can certainly <laughs> try. Maybe you try. She looked good, good in the Franklin. last episode. She did. When she was, like had her little like hood on and stuff like that. <laughs> okay, so I asked Brandon. Brandon, pull up the the bottom of the controller. This is the bottom of the Xbox One controller. It does have a little arrow that indicates you can remove oh. that pack. So it's double A's then. Yeah, but it says it's integrated. Yeah, uh, it was weird. Like, why would you even have that on there? Maybe yeah. there's the option for both. Like, if it's flat, you can put double A's in. Does it have a touch sensor? Maybe like the back of the DualShock Four. That looks like a no. An eject. Yeah, icon. that's definitely one yeah. of the. That's where they push up. I agree with you, open. Gavin. Yeah, it looks like like push this direction to get rid of this. Thing. Hey, thanks for agreeing with me. Hey, Gavin, I agree with you. <laughs> so maybe it's, Yoshi, I want Yoshi. maybe it's just the uh, like like the <laughs> yeah the rechargeable batteries or something like that inside of there. But I don't I do, know. Like, I do like that, that's one thing. I like I, if they make some sort of way to you know place the controllers on a charging pad like easy as possible. Mm -hmm. That's that's okay. Or I'm that's also, easier. I'm, I'm also okay with charging them via USB. I have the problem you talked about where. 
I don't use my PS3 often enough and my controllers end up dying. But since it's USB, you know, I just, I can get that adapter and plug them into the wall. Yeah. You know, yeah. The, the pain in the ass becomes sinking them. You sink it and then like take it out, move it over. Yeah. I wish the controllers were like a Roomba where you just press dock and they move across the floor and plug themselves in. <laughs> Pop out tall. little wheels. <laughs> yeah. End up upside down, yeah. tangled in cords. And smash the place. Man. So uh, you were in the announcement video. No, so I, was, I was just going to, I was asking Brandon to cue that they, up here. they closed on Barbara. Yeah, she was yeah, the last was pretty person. crazy. Yeah, so Bar awesome. Barbara and I, we were, uh, we actually got, uh, we, we did a film thing. Did during, you know that was what it was for when you were doing it? Uh, kind of. I, I, like, they didn't tell us specifically what it was for, but, uh, like, we, we got a little pieces of the script and it kind of figured right. out, like, okay, this is obviously some sort of launch something. Yeah, and um, yeah, like you and Barbara, it was you, you and Barbara missed like half a day at a convention. So you all showed up. I was like, "Where the fuck have you guys yeah, been?" Like, yeah, I think we just did something really <laughs> cool and important. Yeah. <laughs> so they took. Where did they take you to do that? Uh, there's, oh, so, there. there we go. There's there's Barbara and I. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So uh, all my Jack, it looks miserable. All my all my dialogue got cut. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> obviously, they wanted the hot blonde instead of the yeah. big bearded guy. But uh, yeah, it, no. It's, so it was kind of cool. So like during PAX, they they pulled Barbara and I, and like we got the email, and it was kind of like a, like I thought it was just sort of a general like PAX interview where it's like hey we're gonna pull you for a few seconds to go talk about uh, you know like you know your experiences or whatever and then it was like it turned out I was like okay you're gonna get hair and makeup it's like what like it got a lot more extreme so that then, was you after hair and makeup yeah yeah <laughs> they, no, I, that, I, I couldn't yeah, it looked like your beard was a little more fluffed out yeah yeah <laughs> they, they actually the, the woman actually like worked on my beard and cleaned it up make it look Did nice she, can you imagine if you're the hair person and Jack walks in you're like ah oh, fuck <laughs> you're, you're like how do you clean up a bird's nest yeah <laughs> but, the, but then straighten some twigs here I, like, dude I, the hair person walks in all right, the hair person walks in, she takes one look at Jack and goes, I was two days to retirement. <laughs> <laughs> Too old for this Throws shit. Throws her combs. <laughs> but uh, I, I knew it was, it was serious when uh, they're like, oh, we're the director's going to come down and talk to you. And this guy comes out named Doug Prey, and uh, he's the director of this thing. And Doug Prey is a documentary filmmaker that I've seen a bunch of his movies. Like, I, he did a movie called Big Rig. He did a movie called Scratch. And they were, like, r really cool documentaries. Like, oh, my God, I've seen your stuff at South By. And so we ended up talking about that, but... Super nice guy, and uh, Barb, what was, was your experience fun. like with that? Yeah, I mean, I didn't hear the beginning of Jack's story, but that was essentially what it is. They're like, yeah, we're going to interview you for this uh, thing with Xbox. Me and Jack just assumed they'd pull us aside in the convention center and be like, so, Xbox, cool, right? But this was like a whole production, and they had a whole crew there, and it was a much bigger deal than we thought it was going to be. Well, I thought you did very well. <laughs> Thank you. You said alive. I said me, and I said alive. So, yeah. I mean, new You're resume alive. thing? I think so. Right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, give us a performance right now. Alive. There you go. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Barbara. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, there, there were a bunch of people in there. I think E was in there at some point. Laura Lollipop was in I there. I saw BS Angel. Yeah, BS Angel's in there. Um, Something Dragon, like who has like the number one gamer score? Yeah, Ray recognized him. Yeah, Ray Ray is a huge fan. He was the guy on the escalator at PAX, so you could see. What was the guy forever that like went down in controversy? Um, strip club DJ. Yeah, strip, strip club, club DJ. DJ. The yeah. cheater. Yeah. Whatever happened with him? The cheater. He got his uh, gamer score stripped, and I think he ended up getting banned. What wow. a bitch. That's a that's a far fall, my friend. JJ yeah. Abrams was in there. JJ really Abrams. <laughs> what is his gamer score? <laughs> What's he got two? Oh, here we go. Here, here's, so here's the the intro video. Yeah, but uh, yeah. So. Yeah, it was it was uh, definitely a lot of people that. Uh, I guess are, are big in the industry. Yeah, I'm sure there's what, a lot of what, Microsoft folks. I didn't see Major Nelson in it. I guess although he introed the, the whole stream at the top. Oh, Kiki Wolfkill. Uh, he introduced the stream at the top of the show, but I didn't see him in this video. I thought for sure he would be, be Angel. He would be in there. That's Gus Sorolla. Oh, I'm looking. Oh, look, it's me. I'm in there <laughs> yeah. too. Um, Gus, to stay alive now. Yeah. So uh, I, I was hoping we'd see, we'd hear some Jack P action as well. But yeah, yeah. Well, they filmed a bunch of stuff, so I don't know if uh, if there's going to be any more to it or what. But uh, no, nah, this is the one that counts. Oh, there we are. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it was still kind of cool. Like my, my Twitter exploded, man. It was like holy crap. So I guess a lot of people were watching that. So it was pretty cool. Steven. So I'm in a video of Steven Spielberg. <laughs> there we go. All right, so we should talk about that. One of the things they also announced. Oh yeah. Uh, this thing is the they announced the Halo TV show, the Halo live action series. Um, and they specifically referenced the fact that they made Forward Unto Dawn a web series, and now they're making um, the new Halo series. Which I think is interesting, because they also just announced, not Xbox, but uh, was recently just announced, and nobody picked it up, or it's like it wasn't big news. There's a whole new Star Wars uh, series starting that takes place oh, yeah. between Episode 3 and Episode 4. It's called Rebels. I saw that. Yeah, I saw that too, but it's like, why wasn't that a bigger part of the conversation? I think those two things are interesting. So a big Lucas one is coming out now. Uh, 
I'm assuming they, Steven Spielberg is executive producer of this. Yeah, also they, Agents uh, of I, S.H.I.E.L.D. I don't remember how they worded it. I think they said it was going to be a premium content. Yeah, or pre premium television. Premium or television? Like yeah, but they used the word premium. So is it going to be like an HBO series? That Well, see, makes it makes me think it's going to be a paid thing. It's going to be like an additional thing. So. Well, I mean, you can say Game of Thrones is a premium television. Yeah, maybe you, have to, you have to pay comes, for it. Maybe <laughs> yeah, Xbox yeah. Live to watch it. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. So, But they, it's, they, they were so specific about television. It's kind of like, is this going to be a network thing? Is this going to be an Xbox only thing? Like, are they saying now the Xbox One is television? Like, I'm, well, I'm, if 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 Microsoft makes something and it appears on their device, which connects to a television, does that not count as television? Does it have to be broadcast over a major network to be considered television content? Yeah, I, I, I think I guess. so. That line is really starting to blur, though. Yeah, really starting to blur. Like Game of Thrones is television, right? Mm -hmm. And it's uh, it appears it doesn't broadcast on a major network. I mean, it's on you know Cable. a paid network. I mean, I'm sure the subscription rates of HBO are well below you know the normal viewerships of something like ABC or CBS. Yeah, I think I saw again. This is a little off topic, but I saw the ratings figures for Game of Thrones, and I think season three they're getting about six or seven million people an episode. That's amazing Holy for a paid no. subscription yeah. network. That's amazing. I saw a graph compared versus season three compared versus season one and season two. But yeah, but but they they had that graphic behind. Um, uh, Bonnie? The, Bonnie. Um, that said, like, Wake Up John or something like yeah, that? Yeah, Wake Up John. Which is interesting. So I'm curious where this falls in the timeline. And Well, so. I think it was, uh, it looked like Halo 4 assets to me. Yeah. Like some of the promotional stuff they did for Halo 4. But even so, it's like, you know, how will, yeah, how will this fit into the timeline? And if it's going to be a TV show, is this going to be like a, like a, a full-on 22-episode show? Or is it going to yeah. be a miniseries type thing? There, there's the graphic. Would you watch a show that was just the games? In TV form, live action, like just the story. It depends of the on the game. Like Halo One, yeah. I mean that story, absolutely. You talking about that? Yeah, I mean just like everything we've played so far in the games. If that was just remade as a TV show. Oh, you mean okay, not just gluing together cinematics or something like that, right? No, yeah, just like they done. Live I absolutely action. would. I would watch the hell wouldn't, out of that. Wouldn't you expect if, like, say for instance, a Halo made a Halo movie? Wouldn't you expect it would be the Halo story, the yeah. original Halo story? Yeah. Yeah, I would too. I would. I would expect it to be that. Like the discovery of the Flood, spoiler, and uh, <laughs> other stuff like that. You know, like the discovery of Halo, finding Halo, and that whole adventure. I would expect that would be the movie. I would also, yeah, that would be the movie. I would also totally watch a movie about the Forerunners. You would tell would you, I mean, I'm interested in pre-Halo 1 so story. So I've been, I've been getting Halo 4 achievements. I've been finishing up my last few Halo 4 achievements. Uh, and I know you don't have them all yet either. All, yeah, right, do, all right, rub it in. <laughs> I, do you have all the uh, terminals? Have you watched all the terminal videos? No. In Halo 4, they're amazing. They really flesh out the storyline of Halo 4. I really, I really like them in Anniversary, so I'm excited. I will get them in Halo 4. And I think the same company that did them in Anniversary did them in uh, Halo 4. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're really good. Cause man, they, the Spart man, the Spartan Ops episodes are... The people who did the animation of that are yeah. amazing, man. It wasn't yeah. Blur, was it? No, I don't no, think it was not. Blur. It was... Um, was it in-house? Axis? No, it was someone else. Who did I, I forget Halo who it was. was. Halo Wars, I'm pretty sure, was Blur. Halo Wars yeah. was Blur. The cinematics were Blur. They looked lovely. Yeah. Blur, blur is responsible for a lot of crazy cool They did, like, the, uh, the old Old Republic yeah. uh, cinematic Like, the, the Sacking of Coruscant, like, the one with all the... Mm -hmm. yeah, I know we're talking a lot about Xbox, but I still say, if I was ever going to watch a movie made directly by a studio, if Blizzard would make one with their animation mm -hmm. team and make something, I fuck, I watch the hell out yeah. of that. So dude. I'm curious to see. Speaking of Blizzard, if Diablo three is going to come to the Xbox One as well, since they announced it'll be available for PS4. I gotta say, I gotta say, okay, let's talk about the name real quick. You just said Xbox One. It's confusing. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm having to make a conscious effort. It'll be fine. Like you said, Diablo three comes to the Xbox One. I was like. What? I was like, how would that be possible? You know, I mean, literally, we're, I gotta like... We're all gonna have to say original Xbox and Xbox... Why do you think... And we're gonna wrap up here like in a minute and a half. What would you have called <laughs> it? Uh, I don't know. I, 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 but I'm kind of digging them calling it Xbox One. Yeah. Okay. I feel like it's, a, it's almost like a reset. Like everything yeah. we've done is now leading to this. This is the platform. Yeah. It's the new beginning. Like they literally call it all in one. You know, mm -hmm. and it's like it that, sort of makes you know sense. What? I would have called it the Xbox All. That's what I would have called really? it. Really? Yeah, I think nah. maybe so. I don't know. I get the Xbox One. I get it, but I, it's and but it, you know it's one of those things. You know, five months from now, it's not going to matter. A brand name doesn't matter. You say it enough times, it is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody thinks about tall women when you say Amazon.com. They don't. They don't think about the Amazon rainforest. Do you? No. I know. No. I'm going to start thinking about no. some tall women though. I know, right? <laughs> I mean, well, even so, like I, you know, we were talking about like you call it the 360. Like oh, I played this on the 360. Like, are you gonna start saying, "Oh, I played it on the one"? I, I think just, it's, that it's sounds kind of Xbox. I mean, yeah. Xbox? It, I feel like Xbox is already a catch-all 
for the 360 anyway as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I think it's just going to be That's Xbox. why I thought, I th honestly, I, I was thinking it might be just called Xbox. Like, you know, whatever the new Xbox would be, it was just going to be Xbox. Well, like it did with iPad. Yeah, what? Yeah, like iPad is just the oh, iPad. Yeah, yeah, they don't yeah, have yeah. like They didn't call it the iPad 3. Didn't they call it the yeah. next iPad? Wasn't that when they revealed it? When they finally got rid of the numbers? They called it just the next That's, iPad. They just called it iPad. Yeah. Not, yeah. Like iPad Retina and then... Yeah, yeah I, I, I like the idea of just having the name. You know what the difference is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because at some point, like three years from now, you say Xbox, you're going to mean the yeah. one. What are you playing right now? Right now, I was playing some iOS games. Like I told you, I'm uh, in the middle of Gears of War Judgment, uh, which I'm really digging. I'm really liking it. It's a good game. Uh, and I got to go back and play Mass Effect 3 Citadel after that. Yeah. What All are you right. playing, Gavo? Just real quick, wrap yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, it seems a good idea to find out whatever you're playing. I'm playing Skyrim. I put it back in. I got an achievement. Pretty much, I killed a dragon as soon as I got it in the game, got an achievement. And I realized that it was exactly a year since I last played the game. Really? Yeah, I'm or back you, into or it. Or got your last achievement. Are you doing yeah. DLC now? No, I haven't finished the game. Wow. I got a thousand points on you, Sharon, finally. I'm actually jumping into Gay Tony on, uh, on GTA 4. Amazing. Wow, really? Yeah, Je Jeff and, and Gavin, like, all, everyone's been going crazy about how awesome Gay Better Tony is. Better than the original on. game. And we, we just picked up some more copies yeah. of it, and I got the, uh, the complete edition, which has it in there, so I'm going to go play that. I just started playing Far Cry 3, and I'm also trying to get my last two achievements in Flock. Fuck I why? You don't like Far, Far Cry, 3? Cry 3 is amazing. Love that. Oh game. no, it's great, yeah. right? Welcome, congratulations. Yeah. We're Although it games. goes back to the, the Xbox One thing is like, in this fucking game, they make me kill dogs. I hate killing dogs in games. I hate it, and I get skin a dog. What I don't cool like that. Ghost, yeah, we even talk about ghosts. Dog. Yeah, we even talk about ghosts. Dude, that I think putting a dog in is brilliant. People fucking love dogs. Yeah. This, is actually, this is actually Fable 4. We don't know. You don't really have the, the tie together. <laughs> nice. No, they love dogs in games. People yeah. always do. Like oh, yeah. Meathead and Fallout, people love that I dog. I want dogs in GTA 5. I want to run over a dog. You know, I've, there, I said it. I, I've never gotten that dog in Fallout 3. No? I played through the game a couple of times. Never gotten it. All right. Time to wrap up. All right. Okay. I want to thank everyone for joining us for our inaugural episode. <laughs> and we'll be back yeah. at our regular time next Wednesday at 4 p.m. Uh, so Wednesday at 4 p.m. Wednesdays week, at join, 4. Join us. And uh, we'll be back to talk about games.